Is this the self PT, the... visual therapies, learn nothing but muscles. God. We're looking at your notes, eh? He's playing cheat, guys. Assassin's cheat the butt. Christian cheat the butt. Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to part two of Who Knows Better. Hey, yeah, so do it with me. Part two. Yeah, of Who Knows Better. One. Today, we have a very special guest. My very good friend. My absolutely fun-loving and charismatic Gola. Where, where are you from? No, I'm from uh, IT College East. Okay, studying? Studying in nursing first year. Okay, so he's in his first year of nursing studies. He actually just finished his exams. So if you guys haven't haven't watched part one, please go and watch it below. I and if you have haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, okay? So I'll be asking him 10 physio questions and then he'll be asking me back 10 nursing questions, okay? A perfect answer is 4 marks, which is exactly what you wanted, spot on. 3 marks is the answer is somewhat close to what you wanted. 2 marks is the answer is missing some details, but some marks are correct. 1 mark is the answer is partially wrong and 0 means it's totally wrong or you didn't answer at all. The first question is, what is the difference between an ankle sprain and an ankle strain? It's the muscle, you know? <laughs> Niu tao ah, what? Niu tao. So what does it mean? In Chinese? No, in English. Why? Oh, you change channel already. This, this is what, channel five, not channel eight. Strain is due to prolonged usage and the wearing of muscles, right? Wearing of muscle. Okay. Okay. Brain is uh the muscle deform. <laughs> muscle deform. <laughs> the correct answer is ankle strain has got to do with the. Of injury to the tendon or the muscle, and ankle sprain is an injury to the ligament. You know what's the difference between tendon and ligament? Ligament is the bone to bone. Correct. Tendon is the muscle to bone. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna give you a two. What two? Two marks. A patient develop sharp pain over the back and chills 15 minutes into blood transfusion. He's like <laughs> likely experiencing an. Wait, what? So hard with blood with chills? And yeah. Uh sharp pain over back. The lower back. Sharp pain over the lower back. And over chills. the back. La. He's having an infection. Into blood transfusion, yeah. Local and systemic, you know? Like in in blood transfusion. Okay, your second question is name two connective tissues in the body. Connective tissue. Muscle. Blood. Blood, correct. Yeah, I learned before. Wait, muscle, no wait, wait. Muscle is 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 muscle connective tissue? Yeah, connect. <laughs> the bone. Bone, bone is a connective tissue. Yeah. Muscle is a tissue on its own. Muscular tissue. I'm not sure if muscle is a connective tissue because what I know is mine. connective tissue is blood, cartilage, um, bones. But muscle is a kind of different kind of tissue. That is what I learned. So comment down below if you guys know, okay, if muscle is considered a connective tissue. A wound should be cleansed from. Dot dot dot. Yeah. <laughs> a wound should be cleansed from dot dot dot. Yeah, the action of clean cleansing a wound should be from. Okay, okay. From outside to inside. You should clean it from outside to inside. Correct? You should try not to touch the. Oh, I shouldn't try to touch the wound. That's a trick question, man. So you know, so touch a wound when you clean. The purpose of cleansing of cleansing a wound should be from. From, from? <laughs> I forgot. The principle of cleansing a wound should from be from clean to dirty. From clean to dirty. In that sense, oh. it should be top to bottom. Oh. So for example, I got wound here. You should clean from the top to the bottom. Correct. Oh, interesting. Okay. Principles. Technically, you help me answer that question. Thank you. We eating the power. Give me a little teaser, guys. A little teaser of what his questions will be. But it's still so difficult. Number three. What is the biggest muscle in the body? Biggest muscle? Mm. Take a guess. Okay, okay. Gluteus maximus. Wow! No. Gluteus maximus. <laughs> gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. Okay, where is your gluteus maximus? Your S. Correct! It really might be good. Very good. Uh. Yeah, that's the biggest muscle. The only muscle I know. Oh, legit. That's the only muscle you know. The only muscle I know. I'm going to test you another, another muscle. Medical term. Wait, okay. wait for it. Since you, zero point all the way. Hey, I got two points. My first question was two points. Okay, this question is so difficult, guys. Uh, <clears throat> so, what's the term we use? What's the medical term we use for elevation of blood pressure? Hypertension. Chronically, uh, chronic. Chronic hypertension. No, I mean. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I mean chronic high blood pressure. Ah, uh, elevation of blood pressure would be known as hypertension. Yeah. Okay, question number four. C-O-M or C-O-G 
which is known as center of mass or center of gravity, is a point around which the mass and weight of the body are balanced in all directions. Whose COG is higher, man or woman, and why? Higher in what? Higher in what sense? Uh, no, higher in the body. Higher in the body? Yeah. Give me some time. Uh. Man has a pretty huge upper body, right? So usually their center of gravity will be higher. Correct! Correct! Okay, so his explanation is very good. Okay, so men has they do they usually have a bigger shoulder, broader shoulder, right? But women would usually stop it. Okay. <laughs> women will have a have they usually have a bigger hip for childbirth. So our mass will be concentrated at the bottom. So usually our center of gravity is lower. So correct. I'm asking you something that every healthcare professional would know. If you're working in the ward, dealing with uh patients, right? You will definitely know that. Okay. Five moments of uh, hand hand rub. Hand rub. Five moments of hand rub. And hand wash. Uh, slash. And hand wash before coming to contact with a patient. Okay. When coming to contact with body fluid. After touching a patient, after touching a patient's environment, and faith is like the touching the aseptic. Okay, this answer. Okay, what's okay, rate it, rate it. Give it three lah. Okay, so what's the right answer? Well, uh, at least before after touching a patient is correct. Yeah, that one is correct. Then uh before coming in contact with patient environment. Before before touching the patient's environment also need. Yeah. Oh okay, so before and after touching the patient's environment. Yeah. Uh, after coming in contact with patient body fluid. Oh. Yeah. Before. Eh, no, it's before aseptic procedure. It means clean procedure, is yeah. it? Yeah. So, guys, bro moral of the story is to just wash your hands, guys. Question number five. Name one muscle in your calf. <coughs> huh? My calf? Yes. I know. Yeah, yeah of course it? you know. <laughs> this is something that all healthcare professionals should know. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> Stress out, stress out. Kafa. I don't know. This one I really don't know. Guess, guess, guess. guess Come what? on, you've been getting full marks all the way. Eh. At least you have one question that like, you like have to think a bit. I'm nowhere near the answer. Like, nothing Nothing, nothing come comes up. out. Okay, start with a G. G. Guess. Wait, oh, each time yeah. I give you a new letter, you're gonna minus one mark, okay? Okay, minus half a mark. This okay. is like hangman. Uh. Guess. <laughs> guess drop. Guess. Gastrocnemius. Have you heard of it before? No. No. What, okay, what, okay, other, okay. what are other muscles? You say one of it. There's gastrocnemius, there's soleus, there's your tibial, tibialis, posterior. Tibia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tibia is a bone. <laughs> <laughs> a common investigation to diagnose acute myocardial infarction for a patient having chest pain is. So like, for example, for hypertension, right? You would use the blood pressure cuff. Correct, yeah, the blood pressure cuff to speak spigomanometer. Speak fix fix momentometer. Part one. Speaker manometer. Oh is that how you pronounce it? I don't know that's how I pronounce it. So how do you diagnose a heart attack? Oh um uh uh um an angiogram uh, angiogram. That's an angiogram. You do an angi uh, you do an ECG. Uh echocardiogram. 2D echo. Coronary angiography. So you are right lah. Okay. angiography. Question 6. There are three types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and gestational diabetes. So what is gestational diabetes? I learned type 1, type 2. <laughs> Have you heard of gestational diabetes? What's that? I've never heard before. I've never come across a patient with gestational. Oh, okay. So you've never heard of gestational diabetes? Yeah. Okay. So gestational diabetes is then diabetes that pregnant women will have, which is a kind of temporary kind of diabetes that they have, which after they give birth, which might increase the chance of them getting type 2 diabetes. Heard that before? No. No, I know all. A condition which a decreased amount of white blood cell count of less than 1000 mm cubic. It's known as... Sorry, I can repeat. I wasn't listening. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. One more time, one more time. A condition with a decreased count of white blood cells. Oh, okay. Of less than 1000 mm cube. It's known as. I know my blood cell is anemia. La. Yeah. What blood cell? HB. Hemoglobin. I don't know. Eh. <laughs> okay, I, I'll tell you the answer. 
It's neutropenia. Have you heard of it? Neurothrombocytes. The muscle for the people. Oh, they are muscle. The cells. Bottom. Everything about muscle, my head. This is the cell. PT. Of the visual therapies learn nothing but muscles. God. <laughs> Question seven. Name one disease under the umbrella term COPD. Name one disease under COPD. Wait, I only learned COPD. <laughs> <laughs> but you know COPD is an umbrella term, right? Chronic obstructive. Okay, COPD stands for. You wanna explain? Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Why? So it's chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. So there are a lot of diseases under this umbrella term of COPD. Are you googling? No, I got my notes. Do don't. don't this <laughs> play cheat. It's play cheat. A group of respiratory notes. disease where airway resistance is increased with impact airflow. No, but what what is the disease called? I want the name. We're looking at your notes, eh? He's playing cheat, guys. Cheat a butt. Cheat a butt. <laughs> Chronic infection of. Cheat a butt. You're yeah, cheat a butt. Also, COPD, there's infection, ah. Uh. What? It's inflammation. Inflammation. So, chronic obstructive pulmonary pneumonia. disease is. Pneumonia. No? <laughs> no, no, no. I give one more chance because you have your notes if you, okay? I give one more chance, now you get it at zero. Alpha 1 and D. Give up! Yeah. <laughs> okay, so he checked his notes, but he still didn't get it right, okay? Anyway, the, the three diseases, okay, COPD is an umbrella term for three types of diseases. First is asthma, second is emphysema, correct, correct, and the last one is chronic bronchitis. This three. Okay, you learned something new, nurse. Wait, my... I learned it! Uh, how many walls are there in the heart? How many? And what are the types? Three types. Yeah. And what other types is it? Yeah. Pericardium. Okay. Myocardium. Okay. I don't know what's the last one. Okay, so my answer was pericardium and myocardium. Correct? <laughs> is epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. <laughs> okay, so it's it is not pericardium, it's epicardium. Epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium, is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Learn something new, guys. Okay, question number eight. Everything new. Okay, I don't know why you know this, but I just try, okay. Doctors used to recommend the RICE method, R-I-C-E method, to people who strain or sprain their ankle, right? RICE method, right? Okay, but that isn't the most optimum way they realized. So after near doing research, they came up with a new acronym, which is Peace and Love. So what does Peace and Love stand for? So what does it stand for? Like RICE, okay, what does RICE stand for? Uh... Ah, the R is one. Rest. Rest. Then the uh, eyes. Then C, uh, compassion. Then elevation. Yeah, correct. Okay, so peace and love, leh? Try, try, try. Based on your knowledge of rice, what does peace and love stands for? If you guys know, please comment down below, okay? What does peace and love stands for? L stands for uh, lie down. <laughs> <laughs> lie down, okay. Uh... So hey, you <laughs> test me! So the person has sustained an arm injury, you ask them to lie down, is it? Really hard stuff. <laughs> no. Sprain their ankle, ankle what? Okay, 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 L, lie down, okay. This is Gawler's version, okay? It's Gawler's version of peace and love. Oh. Oh, is that? Uh. Oh, you know what? I'll just give you an answer, okay? Yes. Okay. Please do. Okay, peace and love. Peace, P. P is protect, protect the injury, okay? E is elevate, elevate to above the heart level. Okay, A is actually avoid anti-inflammatories, which actually include icing, because icing is an in is an anti-inflammatory method. The normal amount of inflammation in the body is necessary for muscle injury recovery. So you want some inflammation, so you want to avoid anti-inflammatories. That's what that is why that rice method was obsolete. Okay, so A is avoid anti-inflammatories. C is compression. Now you say compression, and the last E is education. So go to your doctor or go to your therapist. Okay, then love. So after you have done the immediate care for your injuries, then you come to love. Okay, so love means L, load. You want to start loading your injury, okay, to get to strengthen it. Then O is optimism. So it's to stay optimistic though you have an injury. V is vascularization. So you want to do exercises that actually still help the blood circulation. And the last E is exercise. Sorry. <laughs> that, that came out very slowly, but it's exercise. Last eat exercise. So you got your peace and love, guys. So, 
patient had a fracture, uh, had fracture his ankle, and has been lying in bed for the past five days. He is at risk of developing bed sore. True, <laughs> true lah. But something related to the fracture. So he fractured his ankle, but and he's lying in bed for five days. So he has not attended to his fracture. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, internal bleeding. Somewhat, swelling lah. Swelling, 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 okay, okay. Compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome. Yeah. What is compartment syndrome? Pain, edema. Edema, edema. is the fluid retention in the body. Yeah. Edema, no, like, swelling, yeah. compartment syndrome. Okay, so, so, so swelling. Okay, so I guess when you have a fracture, you sustain an injury. So the body's first reaction is to have blood flow right blood flow so that you have nutrients you have um white blood cell recovery so that is why if you don't tend to it your your feet can swell okay is it the last really second last question nine <laughs> you're almost there guys almost there okay nine how many legs does a broad based quad stick have you know like how you have walking aids you know you have walking canes you have a walking frame so how many legs does a broad based quad stick have it literally mean quad sticks so, so four la. Correct. So the second last question. Uh, what is the term used for co- a condition for collapsed lung? A condition used for collapsed lung. Pneumothorax. You know, no, no, pneumothorax is, 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 is air in the lung space. No, no, sorry, sorry. Not pneumothorax. In the plural space. Um, yeah, plural space. Wait, uh. Atelectasis? Atelectasis? Yep. Okay, atelectasis. So the last question, number 10. A man has injured his right knee. The physiotherapist prescribes him a walking cane. Which side should he hold a walking cane? Left or right side? He injured his right knee. So right. where should you? He should hold the walking cane on his right, is it? No, no, no. Wait. Oh. Should hold it on his left. Okay, why? Because he's leaning towards his left, right? Then there should be another form of support when he's. Okay, the answer the answer is left. The answer is left side. But the why the the reason to the reason to the why will be weird. So you lean to your left when you're right. Okay, you lean to your left and then. So your center of gravity shifted towards. To your left. So you need left. a left. Based on support, either. okay, very, very, it's quite kind of reasonable, but that's not really the answer, lah. Okay, the answer is seriously, but it's not bad, it's not bad, it's not bad. Okay, I'll give you a three. Okay, it's really not bad, very close. Okay, the answer is actually when you walk, right? Okay, guys, if you don't believe me, stand up now and go and walk. Walk around your room. When you walk, right, you automatically will will lift your right hand as your left leg walks. So we call it contralateral. That means your right hand will move as your left leg goes forward. So similarly, when you use a walking cane, right, it's very awkward if you were to use it on the, on the same side. So you use it on the opposite. It's like, and now you're like marching, you know. So you use your right walking cane with your left leg. So in this case, he injured his right knee. So he should hold the walking cane on his left. So that when he stretches out his right leg, he has a left walking cane to support, to increase the base of support of his right knee. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay. Okay, what are the... Risk factor for acute myocardial infarction. Or risk like. factors for myocardium infarction. You want to explain what is myocardium infarction to people who might not know what is myo- myocardium infarction. Myocardial. Oh, myocardial infarction. Okay, death of a part of myocardium as a result of severe or total deprivation of deprivation blood supply. Okay, so myocardium is actually called. It's actually a term used for the the muscle in your heart. So it's actually another term for muscles in your heart, myocardium. So myocardial infarction, which basically just means that there is not enough oxygen supply to the heart. So you're therefore the muscles of your heart start to, to die off. Okay, so what are the risk factors for that? Okay, risk factors. I guess a high saturated diet. High saturated fat diet, sorry. Okay, yeah. High saturated fat is one of the risk factors for heart attack. Oh, actually, myocardial infarction is actually called heart attack in layman terms. Yeah. 
So even though your heart actually has blood vessels that travels away from the heart to the rest of the body, right? Your heart also has blood vessels to sustain the heart with oxygen and nutrients. So this is when, if it gets blocked, then there's no oxygen to enter the heart. Then we call it a heart attack. Diet. Okay, we have come to the end of... Say together! Of what? Who knows better? Okay. I know better. Okay. <laughs> so we have come to the end of Who Knows Better Part 2. Thanks for watching guys. See you! Bye-bye! Whoosh! -bye.